So I'll spend a little bit of time talking about um, my own interpersonal difficulties and see, see if I can draw anything out um, of those, but also I'll be uh, saying some stuff not about me. I don't want it to be all about me. I'll be a bit miserable. Um, so I'm going to talk um, hopefully for about half an hour. And that will give us a good 25 minutes or so to, um, to go into groups. I'm going to set you a challenge. Um, and for, the, for that purpose, I've got a, got a very clever board um, around here, which I'll bring out a bit later, which will um, identify your challenge. <clears throat> Don't have to worry about that just yet. So we're talking about um, interpersonal difficulties. And um, speaking very broadly, I'd, it came to me that we might talk about the difficulties we have with people may at one level um, uh, refer to a difference of opinions or a difference of views. And that causes us to have difficulties with people. Um, I don't have so much experience of that one, but uh, the, uh, the second one is our holding to certain views. If we hold to certain views, um, we can come into conflict with people. So those two actually ultimately relate to the same thing. If we weren't attached to views, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, so we'll be, uh, I'll be looking at um, views at some point in the talk. I'll be relating what I'm saying to views you might be holding. So first of all, I'll start talking about differences of opinion. So this is potential difficulties which people have because they have different views. Um, and a very, inverted commas, popular uh, way to fall out with people is, is in the area of politics. And I um, wanted to share a story from the life of a friend of mine, Archie, who some of you will know, who goes to the lecture of outreach group, and sometimes you see him here in Cambridge. And um, he plays football regularly with a bunch of guys, um, uh, probably about my age, I guess. Um, and he plays regularly five a side with them and they go to the pub afterwards. And uh, one time he was getting into a political debate uh, with someone in the pub who had um, uh, somewhat more right wing views than his own. But on this occasion, Archie was interested in finding out, well, why does he hold these views? So he, instead of sort of launching in with um, you're wrong and I'm right, he sort of, he went and he started to being interested in, well, why does this guy hold the views that he did? So he said he had a very interesting and worthwhile discussion. And by the end of it, he could actually understand to some degree why this guy held these views, which were different to his own. He could sort of see that how it related in some way to his life experience. So he could sort of understand why the um, guy had these views. He still disagreed with him. That wasn't, but the, the, the problem was taken out of the situation. The reactivity which, with which he might have approached this guy's opinions um, had disappeared because he understood uh, where they may have come from. So it's something very important to learn here. And um, some of you may have come across um, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And if I remember rightly, one of these habits was um, first seek to understand. So that seems to be very important in this connection here. So if, if we really took that on board, um, if we're having a debate, um, we just try and understand why the other person uh, uh, sees things in a certain way. And then, then having done that, they may be quite open to hear about what we have to say about the matter. So um, in terms of harmony, building up harmony between people, then the understanding first, before we launch in our own point of view, may be a very, very good idea. This may entail us suspending uh, the ego for a little while, the ego that wants to say, I'm right and you're wrong. So we may have to let go of that for a while, but if we can do that, we've got more chance of um, uh, staying in harmony with people. So something else to say about the views we hold. Um, some of them we will have picked up along the way uh, maybe from people we know or from, from society at large. 
So if, if that's the case, these aren't well, these probably won't be very well thought out um, opinions or views, at least in terms of our, how, how we um, relate to the views. So if, if somebody starts to um, have a view which is counter to these sort of culturally induced views, if you like, we're on quite unsteady ground. I can imagine we could be rather reactive in this. This is a little bit hypothetical on my part. I'm just putting this forward as a possible thing which might happen. But what, I, what I'm sure about though is that if we've really considered our views, we've really thought them through, so we understand the views we hold, we've, we've thought them through, then we're, on, then we're on surer ground, we're on firmer ground, and if somebody starts to dispute our views, um, well, we've we, we, we got a leg to stand on because we, we sort of um, have an understanding about the views we hold. So I think we're less liable to be uh, reactive, we may still be quite attached to our views. And in fact, the, the, the function of um, really thinking through views may, may, attach to the, may attach ourselves to our views, but we're on a sure footing if we understand why we hold the views that we do. And another thing I wanted to mention about views is that um, in sound group discussions, where our, we'll probably see over a period of time, there's a whole load of views which are being expressed um, so, well, some of which, or indeed most of which, will be at some degree, to some degree, at odds with what we uh, what we would say. But there's an at atmosphere of openness and receptivity, uh, as as a matter of course in sangha, um, often in sangha um, discussions. So this encourages us to be open and receptive to other people's views. And we may re start to realise then that our views actually don't capture the whole truth. Um, other people's experience of life sheds another light on the matter. Um, and after a while, we realise actually our views don't, don't hold the whole truth. In fact, nobody nobody's does either. Even if you put all the views together, that wouldn't fully capture the situation. But it would open us, if, if we were of that opinion that other people had something to say, we're more open to truth on a more general, in a more general way. We'll be able to see the truth in people's views, and possibly even going beyond that to um, uh, becoming truth, becoming open to truth in its fullest sense, which is non-conceptual. I can't, I can't get time to go into that now. So, stressing the importance of seeing the potential um, truth in other people's views. So just talking a bit about um, interpersonal difficulties. Um, and um, as I rather frivolously talked about the, the, theme, the theme, do Buddhist friends fall out at the beginning of the talk? I'll just, I'll just mention, uh, without naming any names, a few cases in which Buddhist friends do fall out. <clears throat> a couple of friends of mine uh, who are still friends of mine, they've been friends for years. But then things got difficult with them and they weren't able to sort things out. So they are currently not in communication. So they, they, they'd fallen out. Um, a friend of mine was on retreat and during the retreat, he fell out with his friend and it took a year or two for them to re-establish um, friendly communications with each other. And a Buddhist friend I had for over 10 years, at some point there were unresolved difficulties which we weren't able to resolve and currently they're not in communication. So Buddhist friends do fall out. So the answer to the question is indeed yes, from my experience. So I wanted to say a little bit more about, about that. At a very superficial level, we could say as we, with friends and people who we've got to know, as we spend more time with them, we, we see more of them. We, we get to see, um, see them, what they're like in their fullness. Then we may encounter some difficulties with certain aspects of their behaviour which weren't clear to start off with. But that's sort of more, um, I think that's the more superficial level. But I wanted to suggest um, that spiritual friendship is a deep thing. And if, um, if we continue with that, it will uncover layers of our being and the layers of other people's being. And that may, may lead to some levels of difficulties. It seems we have to um, uh, uncover these layers 
it's a bit, I'll talk about it a bit later, but, but it's like we have layers of an onion and we need to strip off some of these layers to actually reach ourselves in our, in our greater depth. And we may actually encounter some difficulties when we do that. And I'm, I'm of the view that spiritual friendship is part of that process. Spiritual friendship is a deep thing which may uh, lead to this on a, uh, this stripping of the onion over a period of time, along with other forms of Dharma practice. <clears throat> so we might find that as we um, as we sort of uh, unfold, uh, we start to unfold as part of our Dharma practice. Um, we encounter what you might call deep wounds or deep stuff. Our conditioning might become more visible, may, may start to manifest in our behavior and how we feel in a, in a somewhat difficult way. But I'm of the view that um, this deep wounding, which you might talk in terms, that's quite psychological, talking of wounding is quite a psychological way. But from a more Dharmic view, I think we could also talk about this deep wounding as relating to attachment, deep attachment to views. And I'd like to illustrate this from uh, 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 something from my own life. And I've had a telephone, telephone friend for, for 10 years who, who was very ill. And um, for years and years, I would dread the up tele upcoming telephone conversation. Um, but I made the commitment that I would talk to this lady uh, once a week, so I just carried on with it. But clearly, I found this very difficult. Um, and that, that tells me that my, my deep stuff or my deep wounding was being activated by the, um, by the situation. And I've been reflecting uh, for quite a long time about, about this. And then there's just actually, I was, as I was uh, preparing this talk, I sort of had a bit of a, a bit of a, a moment of clarity that this kind of deep psychological stuff, which this uh, situation of talking to an ill friend on the phone was, was, was resurrecting, you could say, realized it actually related to a deep seated view or assumption. And that deep seated view or assumption was something like, I don't matter much at all. I am an insignificant person. So what this seems to have made happen is that I made the communication all about her. I was out of the picture, which was quite uncomfortable. It was a very unbalanced situation. And I've sort of realized that in fact that dynamic personally of uh, having a deep view about I don't really matter that much has infected a number of my relationships over the years. So it does seem to me very strongly that uh, our view our views, our deep-seated views, can really profoundly affect um, our uh, relationship with other people, in, in, this, in, in this case, in an un, unhelpful way. So the next question I wanted, wanted to address is, was how, how, well, at least how have I and how might we um, address um, uh, our interpersonal difficulties in a way which will help us to overcome them? Um, so I just want to mention a few ways in which um, I have consciously and sometimes unconsciously um, helped my uh, uh, difficulties with other people. So I've got one friend who um, I had something of business relationship with. We both own a house and I get the rent. Um, but it, it seemed to me that uh, uh, that um, whenever, whenever we, we were taught, I was talking with my friend, it was who end up me having to shell out more money for the house. Um, so I this was of this view that this is what was going to happen. So I thought, well, okay, I sort of saw this was going on. We need to spend more time as just friends and not business partners. So it sort of made her a more, um, a more full human being by uh, uh, just see, seeing her more, more than as the business associate. And that's really helped her. Don't really have that difficulty now about expecting to um, shell out money every time I see it. Um, so that was very helpful. Um, <clears throat> there was one person who um, had a bit of a something of a uh, difficulty with. So I so I just placed him in Metabarvana for about a year, and um, after that period of time, um, the difficulty seemed to have been resolved. I had no inclination to put them in the. Um, Metabarbner anymore. So the ill will, which had been uh, had been uh, sort of had come to the fore, but, but seemed to have been been dropped. So that's a, 
an advert for the Meta Gardener can help you with your general genealogy. You've probably heard that many times before, but I'll say it again. Then um, there was one works colleague who I had um, a difficulty with. And um, this is going back a long, long time, about 18 years. And at the time, nonviolent communication, NVC, was becoming a bit in vogue at the time, which is very useful, um, a very useful thing to learn, or at least, at least learn something about. And we decided, actually, at my friend's suggestion, well, uh, we were friends at the time, but we'd had some diff had some difficulties. And um, yeah, so well, why don't we have a meeting based on NVC principles? So um, that was what we did, and um, we, we 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 were we sort of went by the book, and uh, we talked about very specific things. I think he spoke about one particular event. I spoke about one particular event, and we talked about uh, the needs. Uh, or um, values which weren't being met um, in certain situations. Um, and it was a very heavy meeting, um, but I can say it was incredibly helpful and we became much better friends quite soon after that, and that continued. So just having that one uh, strong meeting where we spoke as skillfully as we could um, about the difficulties without blaming and trying to be specific and talking about values was incredibly helpful in furthering our friendship and overcoming the difficulties uh, that we'd had. And um, yes, and there's two, two other friends who there was sort of a bit of ill will being harboured by me. Um, but over a period of time, that just seemed to dissolve. I guess much Dharma practice was involved there, but I suspect that significantly, having persevered uh, week in, week out to be kindly and loyal and, and helpful as I could of sticking to those important values, um, probably over a period of time, helped to alleviate um, the difficulties which I'd had, which had led to um, ill will. So I could say a bit about um, what kind of perspectives, what may, might we, way might we think about things which will help us uh, to overcome um, interpersonal difficulties. So you come in. So an important um, perspective we, we, we might uh, take on board is that um, we, we, we may have the view that um, for us to really get on with this person to a reasonable degree, they have to change. Um, if we have that view, we probably aren't going to get very far because uh, people are, are sort of rather resistant to change, um, uh, as we probably find out in our own life. Um, <clears throat> So, I mean, the best, this is difficult, but um, if we have the view that we actually allow people to be as they are, just fully accept that they are as they are at present, and they may not change, don't fight how people are, but just accept how they are at present. This doesn't mean we approve of how they are, it doesn't mean to say that it wouldn't be better for, for everybody concerned that they, they did behave differently. Um, but we can't force people to change. If you can just sort of accept that things are as they are, which is an attitude of meta, then that's going to be very helpful. Um, people's behavior is very strongly affected by their conditioning, most of which we don't understand or have much information about. Um, so people's behavior is affected by their conditioning as is, as it is ours. So in a way, we don't have to uh, make them bad people because we don't like how they behave. Their conditioning plays a big part in how they behave. And also, um, um, I won't give a show, show of hands here, but, but we probably think that our behavior is totally reasonable. Who thinks their behavior is totally reasonable? <laughs> well, at least some. Um, and probably the people who 
uh, we've had difficulties with. They probably think their behaviour is perfectly reasonable, just as we probably think at some level it, it, our behaviour is perfectly reasonable. So if we can accept the possibility that other people aren't complete fools, um, then maybe we'll be able to uh, uh, at least somehow take on board their, uh, their, their behaviours. And um, if we ref doggedly refuse to see people as full human beings, we just see them, they're, they're like this, they're, they're, they're infinite, people are infinite, but we tend to see this much. Um, if we doggedly refuse to see them as, as, the, as, the, as the bigger picture, then we're going to be going to see more difficulties. So if we've got difficulties with people, we may try and uh, try and see their good points, for example, make them make them more rounded human being. That's going to be very helpful indeed. And um, very importantly, in the difficulties we have with people, we bring something to the table. We may not necessarily know what that is, and we may start off with the perspective that the problem all lies out there, not here, but that's um, unlikely to be the case. So if we can take on board the possibility that we have, um, we, we have we brought something to the table which uh, has led to the difficulty, that's going to be very helpful indeed. Take some responsibility for the situation, at least as much as we can. Then um, we can talk about our difficulties with, um, with trusted friends. Um, they may be able to shed some light on the situation or what we're like, for example, in, in a way that maybe we have difficulty to understand based on our own experience. Um, we, um, we are best not known in isolation, we're only really known uh, more fully uh, by other people. Um, yeah, and if I was... To, uh, so what, was there one thing which has helped me um, alleviate problems with other people? It's getting to understand that I personally am flawed and getting to, um, to see that um, I have my failings. And if I have my failings, then it's a bit more acceptable for other people to be flawed as well. So I really recommend uh, getting some clarity about uh, in what in what ways we're, we're not so great. I wanted to say a bit about um, this. This is getting very much about me. Um, but having sort of done uh, preparation for this talk, I have managed to get some clarity about some deep-seated views which have contributed to some per interpersonal difficulties. Um, and I mentioned earlier that I'd, I'd uncovered a, a deep-seated view that I'm, I'm, I'm insignificant, which has led to uh, making think other people more important which hasn't been that great, leading to, leading to um, difficulty for myself. But also I have had some trust issues in other people. And I realised that I, my basic default position is people are untrustworthy. Not a very good one to have, but um, that does seem to be the case, that there's a tendency to see people as untrustworthy and less shown to be otherwise. And here is a bit of an admission. Uh, I appear to have had uh, a deep CT view that I am a superior person. Again, a bit of an admission there. Um, so this means if someone's presenting themselves as an authority, um, um, I might find this rather difficult, unless I see them as an even superior person to me. Um, so that's uh, something which uh, definitely got in the way in the past. And um, I seem to have had a view that um, if I don't give people what they want, I will fall out of harmony with them. Again, this is something to do with lack of trust. Um, so with this all tend, tend for me to, to give people what, what, what they wish, even if, even if this has led to some difficulty and possibly even to ill will at times. And um, I had a, had a strong 
um, sense of the value of interpersonal harmony, possibly to an exaggerated extent. So this may have led to my ignoring difficulties I had with other people because I value uh, harmony greatly and maybe have a view that um, interpersonal harmony is of absolutely paramount importance, which could have led to some somewhat more superficial harmony. Um, uh, yeah, but by ignoring difficulties I have with people. So having said all that, um, my conclusion is that um, our relationship with other people um, is strongly affected by underlying views. Um, but it may, may take quite a long time to um, uncover at least some of them. And th those views there, um, which they were news to me up until quite recently. So that's 21 years of Dharma practice. Um, to uncover some of these views. So it's not, it's reasonably slow work. Um, as I said, it's a bit like the peeling, the peeling of layers of the onion. So the, 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 the path of self-knowledge seems to be a bit like peeling away the layers of an onion. And if we go deeper and deeper, we get understand ourselves in a deeper and deeper levels. And it's probably at some of the, these more deeper levels that the, um, these, these long-term deep-rooted views lie. And I think a very important um, aspect of this whole business is um, getting a taste for self-knowledge, um, wishing to understand ourselves at greater and greater levels. Um, and this means taking a very honest look at some of the uh, things we might not want to look at. Um, for example, interpersonal difficulties, because these may shed some light on the deep-rooted views and assumptions that we hold, which are getting in the way of us living a more fulfilled life. Um, and um, it has been said that a wise man or a wise woman knows himself very well. So it's a very, very important aspect of wisdom is getting to know ourselves in our depths, in our heights and our depths. Um, but, Talking on, on the a very positive side, I would say that um, our difficulties with others is a spiritual gold mine. They show us very clearly what we've got to work on. So if we accept the challenge, we, it's, it's very clear what we have to work on, at least, well, maybe not very clear, but we've got uh, something to look at to help us progress. Um, and it has been said that difficult people can be our greatest teacher. And uh, my pre private precept to Art of Prius said something rather nice when somebody was complaining that they had a very difficult person to work with in the Meta Bardner. And he said, lucky you, I thought it was a nice response. You got something to work with. You got a, you got a genuinely difficult person to work with, which is, so, so we know what to do. Uh, we know our, our, our path, the path is clear. And rather lovely story um, from, I can't remember his, uh, his, his, first, his first name, but he's Gurchev. You might, might have heard of Gurchev. He was around in the early part of, of the last century. And he was a spiritual guru, teacher, leader of a spiritual community. And there's this nice story that um, he was living with these people. And there was one really difficult guy who nobody got on with. And eventually this guy left the community and Gurchev chased after him and begged him to come back to the community. Because he because he wanted his disciples to have something difficult to work with, mind <laughs> this guy. So, so um, personal difficulties are a real uh, a real gold mine if we're pre prepared to take the challenge. So now I've got a challenge, and I'm going to get my board out. The board of challenge. <laughs> <clears throat> So when we, go, when we go into groups, small groups, um, what I'm going to suggest we do is we have a go at talking skillfully about our interpersonal difficulties. So rather than talking unskillfully and just unloading um, ourselves about the difficulties we have, I'm going to suggest we talk skillfully about interpersonal difficulties. And um, so I've got a few, few guidelines that you might like to follow, uh, which will help us um, along that path. Um, first one, don't try and justify yourself. 
um, don't rationalize things, which will probably end up with, a, with blaming other people. So try and avoid blame. Um, so that will mean um, taking an interest in your responsibility. What, what do you bring to the table? To see if you can uh, uh, have an in, uh, get some sense of what, what you can be responsible for in this situation, or at least be interested in, if you haven't really got much clarity, at least be interested in what, what you may be responsible for. And um, as um, was suggested in the, in, in, in the NBC model, um, talk about specific events, not about generalities. Just to think about, instead of saying the, 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 a difficult person, okay, give us one situation where you found their behavior difficult. So be very specific about um, difficulties we have. If we've got a lot of clarity, you might be able to understand what important values weren't being met by our relationship or the, these different events with, 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 with people we find difficult. But that may be asking a lot, but it may be possible to tease something out about, about, about that. Avoiding harsh judgments, saying people are like this. Um, just try not to go there. So what we're aiming to do here is speaking, you could say, from our higher self. Speaking as we would, uh, speaking as if we're a member, what well, I'm going to say, as if we're a member of a spiritual community. We are <laughs> a member of a spiritual community. We're trying to remember, remembering that we're a member of a spiritual community. So we're speaking from our higher self. And I'm of the opinion, that if we bring that, um, that higher self out in our communication, it makes it more real. It helps helps our higher uh, aspirations uh, to be more, more, more adhered to. Now, it may be that uh, when you say you've got a difficulty with your mum, for example, long term, it might be very difficult to speak um, skillfully about that. If it is, just acknowledge that. But it is very difficult to talk skillfully um, about this particular difficulty, particularly if it's a, it's a, it's a long term one. And um, again, uh, relating to, to NVC, acknowledge if there are any related feelings um, in those difficulties. Maybe there's rage, anger, disappointment, envy, whatever, whatever. If, if maybe you'd be able to contact um, something about uh, the feelings which are uh, present for you in relation to these difficulties. 